Apis mellifera, or the common honeybee, begins foraging at about 21 days of life, though this number can be manipulated by many factors. Each bee forages for one of four materials needed in the hive, either nectar, pollen, water, or propolis. A colony will have about 25% of its population foraging each within 13 square kilometers around the hive, though foraging environments can be up to 600 square kilometers. These bees search for floral patches which can be as small as 100 square meters. Very few bees, about 1%, will forage for water. Water is used for thermal regulation in hot months in conjunction with fanning to reduce the temperature of the brood, as well as in dilution of brood food. Propolis is used as a glue to hold comb to the roof of the hive and in filling any crevices or cracks to prevent wind and water leaks. Bees that collect nectar and pollen tend to specialize in a specific species for an extended period of time until that resource is no longer available. This helps with improving skill and efficiency in collection, and when they are forced to switch plants, their processing time increases. Nectar is sucked up through the tongue or proboscis and stored in the honey crop until it can be unloaded at the hive. Collected nectar is processed and evaporated, which turns into, it into honey, the main food source for adult bees. The major Texas honey plants are dandelion, yopon, horsemint, dewberry, mesquite, goldenrod, and broomweed. Foraging onset can be manipulated by a colony's proportions of foragers and nurse bees, the need for resources, and the amount of brood. Daily foraging can depend on weather, cloud cover, temperature, and honey flows and dearths. According to Eckert et al., when colonies are larger and there is more brood, foragers tend to work harder and carry back larger loads of pollen and nectar. And according to Page et al., variability in individual and colony level foraging behavior is based in genotypes. These behaviors include decisions to forage for pollen or nectar, plasticity in switching resources, load sizes, the round trip time and number of trips, the age of foraging onset, the attendance of waggle dances, foraging distance, and the quantity of honey and nectar stored in comb. Pollen is collected and stored in the corbicula, or pollen baskets, on the back legs of a bee until it is unloaded in the hive. Pollen is used mainly in brood food, and colonies keep about only one week's supply on hand due to the space required for storage. Pollen is not typically necessary for winter survival due to the decrease in brood rearing during this time. When they return to the hive, foragers are unloaded by bees that unload and process the resources. If they are not unloaded in a timely manner, which is less than 60 seconds, they will perform the tremble dance, which involves running, quivering, and shaking. The tremble dance decreases the likelihood that other bees will leave to forage. About 10% of unemployed foragers will serve as scout bees, scouting out new resource patches. Upon returning to the nest, these bees may dance to inform foragers in the nest of these resources. These bees will perform the waggle dance, which tells distance, direction, and profitability of the food source if it is more than 100 meters away. If a resource is within 100 meters, scouts will perform the round dance, which conveys no directional information. All of these behaviors and responses come as an instinct to bees, and all communication is done with pheromones. Most of the decisions they make are ultimately life and death, meaning they can't afford to miscalculate. Honeybees have been around for millions of years and thrive in most parts of the world, but between large monoculture crops, pesticide use, and habitat destruction, the honeybee is finding it difficult to prosper in some areas. Keeping environments bee-friendly can help ensure the future of the honeybee, the honey we enjoy, and the species they pollinate. When the honey don't come when the honey don't come We're making beelines to hit